Hi guys, I'm going to make you a setup video for the MicroBeast, which is fairly easy to adjust uh, following the instructions. But there are still a few points I want to mention concerning uh, fly ballast helicopters, which are not necessarily written in the user manuals. First point, of course, is the fly ballast head. You need a specific fly ballast head, which is quite simple versus a fly bar head because there are less mixing levels and things like that. Uh, they have nevertheless to have a few characteristics that are important. First, you need to have a bigger distance between the two linkage here to reduce the throw because a fly ballast helicopter is more nimble than a regular helicopter. Other point is that you need some very parallel linkage to the rotor mast. Uh, for that you have to adjust the, sp sp the thrush plate driver here to be exactly on the center of the rotor mast. On this head you cannot adjust it, on some other heads you can rotate it and in this case you have to adjust it exactly. The next point is that by construction the arms of the blade grip have to be long enough to have the upper ball exactly on the center of the axis. Second point important are the blades. If you take uh, this uh, cheap Chinese blade, for instance, and you make the fly ballast test, what I call, is just to put them on a screwdriver and let, uh, let them fall like this you will see that they have some angle. Uh, this angle is going forward because the, the center of gravity is very backward. This makes that in flight you have the blade in front of the direction which makes it instable mainly in fast forward flight. Uh, you take an airliner for instance, they will have some blades backwards to be very stable at high speed. What we want is some blades perfectly neutral like that, uh, which is not the case of this blade, so I would not recommend to use blades like this for flying a fly ballast. Let me show you some blades which are correct for fly ballast. Here this one you see that the leading edge and the trailing edge are nearly parallel, which is a good point to start in fly ballast. The third point, important, very important point, are vibrations. If you take a regular gyroscope, you will, it will only be sensitive to vibrations on this plane. So there are not much vibrations like this in a helicopter because it is rotating against this axis. But now if you have uh, an eccentricity on the main uh, rotor blades, you will get some vibrations in this, this axis, which is one of the axes controlled by one of the gyroscope. So a fly ballast system will have be sensitive on this plane and on this plane. Let's take on the tail some eccentricity and you will get a vibration like this that you will see exactly on the other part uh, transmitted to the gyroscope and giving you in flight some drifts or some uh, um, inaccuracies during the flight. So it is very important to have a good uh, and straight uh, vibration-free helicopter. And you will see that on my helicopters I often have a small piece of tape on the tail to adjust the vibration until the tail is not showing any vibration on, on, the, on the tail maybe. You can look on my logo, same thing, I have a small piece of tape which uh, will make the difference at high speed. Uh, if you are doing uh, the resonance speed, you will see the difference uh, of a, such a small piece of tape. Fourth point is the electrostatic discharge. Uh, you need to ground everything uh, related to the rotating parts like the belt or motor, things like this. Because the fly ballast system is controlling the whole helicopter, any electrostatic discharge can make you go flip around or whatever, which is quite critical. On a regular gyroscope, the only effect you will have 
will be some small tail moves, uh, but here it is more critical because it can be on any command of the helicopter. <clears throat> so here's the installation in my Logo 600. Be careful when you install it not to touch any part of the frame to have a freely moving uh, micro beast on its uh, pads. Maybe it's not a good idea to do like I did here, having some uh, sleeves around the cables because it is uh, too stiff. Or if you do so, uh, be careful not to have any constraints on the leads going to the micro beast and may, that may conduct some vibration to the micro beast. So, next point is setting up the transmitter. In Flybarless, you need a very plain transmitter and clean transmitter without any mixing, without any subtrim or whatever. For that, you have to be careful and uh, the best thing is to start on a brand new model. So, on a Spectrum DX7, for instance, you can... Uh, I recommend to start on a very clean model by doing a data reset. Doing this, you land in a one servo swash type, and when you go in the in the system, you have some very straight lines, no mixing curves or whatever. You have uh, no sub trims, and all endpoints are at 100%, which is ideal for flyballess uh, use. On the connecting, connecting the micro beast, you follow exactly what is written in the user manual and basically you will find a receiver that is connected to the micro beast which is connected to the three uh, cyclic servos and to the tail servo. Basically the, trans the receiver is just sending your roll or pitch uh, orders and it is a micro beast that is making the CCPM mixing and all the stabilization stuff on the signals before sending them to the cyclic servos. Be careful at the connection to have on always a black or uh, black or brown to the downside and be careful when you connect your micro beast to connect it really with it with the connectors like that like it should be and not one step higher and not one step higher like that which obviously will not work and uh, it will not even turn on. So this is one point often people don't see. They uh, have it mounted on their helicopter. Connecting it like this looks perfect, but it isn't. So be careful of, of that. Okay, let's see you for the setup. <laughs>